The digestive system consists of several organs working together to convert food to energy and absorb nutrients, minerals, and proteins, among other things for the body. The two main functions of the digestive system is to prepare food for absorption and the output of waste, which is feces. The mouth is the opening to the alimentary canal. The main process occurring within the mouth is mastication or chewing. The lips are fleshy folds surrounding the mouth and are lined with mucous membranes. Mucosa aids in mastication and the breakdown of food. The cheeks are distinct fat pads that are a barrier for mastication. The tongue is the strongest muscle pound for pound in the body because it is used very often. It is vital for taste, mastication, swallowing of food, and speech. The tongue has four main areas of taste, sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. However, some may include umami as well. The function of teeth is to tear and break down food. Incisors are used for cutting, canines for tearing, and molars for grinding. Teeth are rooted in gums, which is made up of porous alveolar bone and is covered by gingivae. The roof of the mouth is called a palate. Towards the back of the mouth is the uvula, which helps channel food down. In the mouth, salivary glands produce saliva to moisten food and lubricate passage down the throat. The three main glands in the mouth are the parotid, sublingual, and the submandibular. Amylase is the enzyme that begins sugar digestion of carbohydrates. The pharynx serves as a pathway for food and where the tonsils and salivary glands are found. The epiglottis is a flexible flap that allows food to pass into the gastrointestinal tract without entering the lungs. The esophagus is the fibroelastic muscular tube that channels food by peristalsis, wave-like contractions of smooth muscle to push contents forward. From there, the food reaches the stomach, where acid and enzymes break the food down into smaller pieces. The cardiac sphincter muscle helps prevent acid reflux by contracting, then it relaxes to allow food to pass into the duodenum. Food is then turned into a mixture known as chyme. The stomach can then be divided into four distinct parts. Cardia, fundus, corpus, and pylorus. The cardia is a section closest to the esophagus below the cardiac sphincter. The fundus is on the opposite side on the upper area of the stomach. The right side of the corpus is relatively straight and known as a lesser curvature, while the lateral left side is known as a greater curvature. The pylorus is the lowest and narrowest part of the stomach. The liver's main function is to process the nutrients absorbed from the small intestine. The liver secretes bile, which also helps with the digestion of fat. It takes in materials absorbed by the intestines and converts them into various chemicals that the body will later use, while also separating them from the chemicals that could be potentially harmful. The liver also manufactures cholesterol. Carbohydrates are produced in the liver where it turns glucose into glycogen that can be stored both in the liver and in the muscle cells until it is later needed. The high levels of insulin and suppressed levels of glucagon during a meal promote the storage of glucose as glycogen. The liver, known as nature's factory because of all it does, makes coagulants and anticoagulants, detoxifies and stores blood, stores iron, vitamins, and glycogen, produces bile, amino acids, proteins, and urea, and processes cholesterol. The gallbladder stores bile, then releases it to help absorb and digest fats in the small intestine. It squeezes stored bile into the small intestine through a series of tubes. The bile also helps the digestive process by breaking up fats. The gallbladder is not essential for human survival, but it helps the body and can prevent illnesses. In the pancreas, various enzymes and hormones help to further break foods down. It has both an endocrine function that releases juices or enzymes directly into the bloodstream and an exocrine function that releases juices into the ducts. These enzymes help to further break down the carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and chyme. The glands in the pancreas also produce the hormone insulin and secrete it into the bloodstream in order to regulate the body's glucose or sugar level. The most common pancreas condition is diabetes. Type 1, for example, is where the body's immune system attacks and destroys the pancreas's insulin-producing cells. The gallbladder stores bile produced in the liver. This bile then begins the breakdown of fat, dissolving large fat globules into small fat bubbles through a process called emulsification. The pancreas secretes pancreatic juice, which completes the digestion of protein. It also secretes insulin to control blood sugar levels. 
The small intestine is the part of the digestive tube which connects the stomach to the large intestine. It is an elastic and soft tube made of muscles and membranes and can reach about 16 feet if stretched. The small intestine has three parts, the duodenum, jejunum, and the ileum. The small intestine starts with the duodenum, which changes the acidic content of chyme to basic. The middle of the small intestine, the jejunum, massages and grinds up food. The ileum makes up the last two-thirds of the small intestine. It is the muscular tube where peristalsis takes place and is lined with a thin membrane called the villi, which allows absorption of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients into the bloodstream. The iliocacal junction attaches the small intestine to the large intestine, which is also called the colon, and is part of the final stages of digestion. It is a large tube that helps remove waste from the body. It is five feet long and two times the diameter of the small intestine. It contains the ascending colon, descending colon, transverse colon, and sigmoid colon. The opening of the large intestine and the beginning of the ascending colon is called the cacum. The cacum is connected to the small intestine and the appendix. The appendix is a vestigial organ which once acted like a second stomach but is no longer needed. The large intestine absorbs any remaining minerals, vitamins, and nutrients. Liquid is then removed from the waste as it passes through the colon. Then the waste makes its way to the sigmoid where it is stored. The body then is ready for a bowel movement and the waste is dumped into the rectum. This waste, called feces, then flows from the anus. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned a lot about the digestive system and its many functions.